Hello everyone! Welcome once again to another science adventure. I'm Teacher Sam, your science buddy, for today's lesson. For today's objective, number one, enumerate the phases of cell cycle. Number two, identify the stages of mitosis and meiosis. And number three, compare the difference between mitosis and meiosis. Are you now ready to start this adventure? Come on, let's dive in. Have you ever wondered? When you look at your parents, you can see features that you share with them, such as shape of the eye, the presence of dimples, or even the hand you use when you write. The sharing of features can be explained by studying heredity, where traits are passed on parents to offspring. When you look at your brothers and sisters, even if you share the same parents, each one of you can be considered unique based on the combination of traits each possesses. That is biracial, which demonstrates differences among individuals. Did you know that humans share about 90% of genetic material with mice and 98% with chimpanzees? To understand more about this trivia, let's explain important terms in this lesson. Genetics is the study of heredity and variation. It aims to understand and how traits can be passed on to the next generation and how variation arises. Every living thing undergoes reproduction. The nutrients taken by an individual will provide for energy for metabolic processes for growth and development as well as reproduction. The cellular level of reproduction in the form of cell division provides for the backdrop for the organismal level of reproduction. All living things contains what we call the genetic material that serves as the set of instructions that direct the activities and functions of the cell. This genetic material, also known as deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA, are passed on from one generation to the next to ensure the continuity of life. Let's play a game! For fix, one word. And here is the first word. Do you know already? You're right! The correct word here is cell. Let's have the next word. Do you know the answer now? That's correct. The second word is cycle. For today's lesson, it is all about the cell cycle. Do you know what is cell cycle? Cell cycle is a series of steps that includes cell growth, duplication of genetic material, and cell division, usually resulted to identical cells. In other words, the cell process through various steps in order to grow, duplicate its DNA, and finally, split into two or even four new cells. This is cell cycle. The cell cycle may be divided into two stages. First, we have the interphase, which includes the G1 phase, the S phase, and the G2 phase. And the second stage is the M phase, also known as the cell division, which includes the mitosis or the meiosis. The interphase is divided into three substages. The first one 
is the G1 pace stands for first gap period or G1 which time the cell grows initially second pace is the S pace also known as the synthesis stage this stage is characterized by protein and ribonucleic acid or RNA synthesis which is synthesized based on the DNA is then used to synthesize proteins the middle stage of interface called the synthesis stage is the period of DNA synthesis or replication the chromosomes are duplicated in the preparation of the next cell division the third one is the second gap period or the G2 pace represents a period of a rapid cell growth to prepare for cell division during interface the nucleus is clearly visible as a distinct membrane bound organelle alternating with the interface is the cell division pace or M pace in eukaryotic cells there are two types of cell division the mitosis and the meiosis mitosis is type of cell division produces two identical cells with the same number of chromosomes while meiosis is a special type of cell division where the cell undergoes two rounds of cell division to produce four daughter cells each with half the chromosomes number as the original parent cell and with a unique set of genetic material as a result of exchange of chromosome segments during the process of crossing over let's find out more what are the stages of cell division mitosis is divided into four stages stage one is propase in propase the nuclear membrane and the nucleoli may still be present the chromosomes are thicker and shorter because of repeated coiling at this stage each chromosome is made up of two identical sister chromatids as a consequence of replication of DNA during the synthesis phase the second stage is the metaphase the nuclear membrane has disappeared while the highly coiled chromosomes align at the metaphase plate an imaginary plane equidistant between the cell's two poles spindle fibers are also formed each fiber binds to a protein called kinetochore at the centromere of each sister chromatid of the chromosome the third one is the anapase the paired centromeres of each chromosome separate towards the opposite poles of the cell as they are pulled by the spindle fibers through their kinetic course this liberates the sister chromatids each chromatid is now regarded as a full-fledged chromosome and is now made up of one sister chromatid and the fourth one is telopates the chromosomes are now at the opposite poles of the spindle they start to uncoil and become indistinct under the light microscope a new nuclear membrane forms around them while the spindle fibers disappear there is also cytokinesis or the division of the cytoplasm to form 
two separate daughter cells immediately after mitosis. Now we understand the stages of mitosis. Let's move on to a special type of cell division known as meiosis where the cell undergoes two rounds of cell division to produce four daughter cells. Let's simplify the explanation of meiosis. Meiosis undergoes two cell division, the meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 has the same process with mitosis, with the stages of prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, and telophase 1. Meiosis 1 produces two identical cells. After the meiosis 1, the two identical cells will proceed to meiosis 2 with the following stages. Prophase 2, a new spindle fibers forms around the chromosomes. And we have the metaphase 2, metaphase 2, where the chromosomes line up at the equator. And the anaphase 2, where centromeres divide and the chromatids move to the opposite poles of the cells. And the fourth stage is the telophase 2 where the nuclear envelope forms around each set of chromosomes and the cytoplasms divide in the process of cytokinesis. After the whole process of meiosis, it will produce four haploid cells which unique to sex cells for reproduction. Now that we understand the stages of cell cycle and cell division, let us compare the difference between mitosis and meiosis through this activity. Comparing mitosis and meiosis using this table of basic comparison between mitosis and meiosis. Number one is the number of daughter cells produced. Number two, the types of cell it occurs. Number of chromosomes is half. Is the pairing of homologous chromosomes take place? And if the daughter cell produced are always identical in terms of genetic materials. Do you have your answers now? Let's have mitosis. For the number of daughter cells produced in mitosis, it produces two diploid cells. For what type of cell mitosis occurs in somatic cell or body cells? For the number of chromosomes is half in mitosis, it's no. For pairing of homologous chromosomes take place for mitosis, it's yes. And for daughter cells produced are always identical in terms of genetic material, the answer for mitosis is yes. Now let's have meiosis. For meiosis, the number of daughter cells produce four haploid cells. And for types of cells, where meiosis occurs, it is in gametes or sex cells. For the number of chromosomes that is halved, for meiosis, it is yes. Number of chromosomes is half. For pairing of homologous chromosomes take place, 
in meiosis? The answer is no. And for the daughter cells produced are always identical in terms of genetic material, for meiosis is no. There you have it. That's the difference between mitosis and meiosis. Cell cycle plays a vital role in preserving life. It is important to every organism in different ways. But overall, it allows them to survive. For cell division, it also plays an important role in all living organisms, as it is essential for growth, repair, and reproduction. This process helps in renewing of damaged cells. There you have it! Have you learned something new today? I hope you learned something that will help you for our daily living. Once again, I'm Teacher Sam saying, see you next time for another science adventure. Bye!